be there, but she had to go in. Her shoes were ready. Just because he was a smarmy salesman didn't mean she couldn't march right in and pick them up. Fiona ruffled and smoothed her emotional feathers with these thoughts after work as she walked stiffly toward the store. I will be a model of restraint and politeness, she thought, no matter what he says. Inside Madison's shoes, there were a dozen people busy looking at their feet in mirrors or holding up shoes. Madison's had sales twice a year, and today was the first day of the summer sale. Fiona had lived here outside Durham for seven years and knew how it worked best. Last week, she had come in and tried on six different pairs of shoes. She put her favorites on hold with a deposit of $20. Today, she'd held the top lapels of her trench coat together at her neck against the wind and stepped inside. There were shoe boxes piled on the floor and loosely stacked on the couches, all giving the store a disheveled look. A full family of rodents could have lived there undetected. The late afternoon breeze had chilled Fiona, but inside she felt her cheeks redden. The door opened and closed behind her several times, more people intent on finding the best deal on a great pair of shoes or boots. The socks and purses were always optional, but more interesting at a sale price. Fiona waited at the register while three salesmen frantically fetched shoes for new shoppers. She breathed slowly, exactly as all the relaxation articles advised, and tried th to think pleasant thoughts about shoes and not the many feet that had been inside of each pair. From her peripheral vision, she saw the salesman with a dark mustache approach her. Just my luck, I have to converse with mustache man, she thought. I'm here for the shoes I placed on hold, she said, her voice a tad more sing-songy than she'd intended. Davies is the name. The red Italian pumps, right? He said with a half grin. The gray streaks in his mustache made him resemble a fish of some kind she'd seen in a lake. She nodded. He walked into the back room, his posture drooping forward. As she gazed at the others looking at shoes, she tried not to stare. She liked to see the expressions on people's faces and try to figure out if they felt like she did when she was zeroing in on just the right pair. It was a kind of trance, but a pleasant one. To each his own, of course, she knew that some people actually liked to talk to the salesmen during this process. Fiona was not needy in this way. In fact, she took great pride in the fact that she preferred to try her shoes alone without commentary or encouragement from others. I like my own judgment very much, thank you, she often thought to herself as others watched her try on shoes or clothes. It wasn't a social occasion, and she truly believed that she needed relative quiet to accurately assess the choices. Mustache man returned with the shoes. Want to wear them out? he asked. He raised an eyebrow, suggesting what? Did he think she was a particular kind of woman? He looked at her chest. That won't be necessary, she said. She had never done that in her life and wondered what kind of person said yes to that question. He rang them up on his register. His name tag read, Mr. Ogilvy, but Fiona had never heard anyone call him anything other than Dudley. And Dudley dutifully checked inside her box to be sure she had a left and a right shoe of the same size. Old school. Dudley had worked at that store a long time, and his entire demeanor was that of a man soaked in the marinade of leathery smells and an endless loop of salesy chat. Fiona felt a pang of empathy for Dudley before signing the sales slip. He boxed up the shoes, pulled out a bag with handles, and handed it over with a slight bow. Thank you, Fiona said. We look forward to seeing you again very soon, said Dudley. Fiona gave him a thin smile and turned to make her way out. Pushing open the door was the lifeguard from the beach. He had been a star on the swim team in high school and then at college, and this summer he'd taken the job as a lifeguard while he pondered his career choices. Fiona blushed while smiling, knowing what she'd thought about his body the first time she'd seen him. She couldn't help it. He was a museum quality male specimen, tan, muscular, well-proportioned, and sexy. 
The minute she thought it again, she had the uncanny feeling he knew what she'd thought. He made her think of a different life she might have lived. It, made, it felt good, and it also made her feel lightheaded. Evening, he said, bowing his head slightly as if he'd taken off a hat. Good evening, said Fiona with a smile. She hesitated and then closed the door behind her. The shoe store was a community gathering place, and she felt affection for this aspect of her town. She felt herself wanting to go back in, offering some excuse, but what could it be? She hadn't left anything. If only she'd been spontaneous and worn her red shoes out of the store this time. That would have made a different impression. She walked home, still lightheaded. Inside her house, she pulled out the box, took out the shoes, and slid into them. She turned on her radio and danced, imagining the lifeguard ringing the bell and stepping inside to lead. Thanks. Mm -hmm.